Hey, what's up? It's a figure hunter and up tonight is a midpoint review for the training load, recovery time, workout exertion scores for all the primary manufacturers, Koros, Polar, Sunto, and Garmin. Here is the trusty stand that I've been using. Um, another one I made compared to the other video just to hold the watches so I can see them all tracking at the gym and just wear a chest strap so they're all tracking the same heart rate accuracy. As always, everything on the Fit Gear, Hunt, Fit Gear Hunter channel and website is for the purpose of tracking and testing devices for the purpose of CrossFit and high intensity interval training versus all the running, sw swimming, biking videos that are out there. So if you like this, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing for more. There's a lot of reviews on the way. I get the Nike Metcon 7 shoes this week. I should get the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 Classic this week. I'm hoping to get a test unit from Koros for the new Vertix 2 in the next couple of weeks, and then we'll finalize this sort of training load tracking at the end of a longer period of time. So what it is for tonight is just an up point, you know, a midpoint review, sort of after taking the watches through some hard workouts the last few days, how are they sort of reporting information? How are they sort of analyzing the difficulty of the workouts? Because Thursday, Friday, Saturdays with the workouts were just a little bit more brutal than usual. So it's giving me a, a glance in to how they're tracking. So we're going to go sort of in this order. We're going to go with Koros and then Sunto and then Polar and then Garmin. We're going to look at each of the, some of the information you can see on the watch versus some of the information on the app. And we'll just sort of pause in between each and then come back together for a summary. So with that, let's take a look at what I'm seeing on Koros out of the gate. But before we do, the first thing I got to tell you is that Koros requires 300 minutes of running to activate their training load tracking. Think about that. It's over 42 days, 300 minutes. That's 30 10 minute runs and you have to do it on a flat surface. So you don't get any of these stats we're going to see until you have run and log 300 minutes within a 42 day time period in order to activate the tracking and then you start your fitness building. So it is a lot of commitment there. So that's why I'm just going to get chorus out of the way in the beginning because I feel like that's a bigger steep hurdle than should be required. So let's take a look. Okay, first, what do we see on the watch? I'm just gonna look at some of the basic stats. So the running performance is not useful. Fatigue is saying excessive. Now, I have been pushing a little bit more. I do like that the base fitness is going up and you can see the load that Thursday's workout was definitely brutal and all the workouts, although Friday's workout was really brutal too. So we'll see how that tracks over time. Um, so excessive at risk of injury. So that is the thing that I don't understand. This right here, so my training load, I'm 4% recovered. I just did a light 20 minute run today. Obviously yesterday's workout, which was yesterday morning at nine was rough, but rest 80 hours still before hard recovery, 90 hours for full training. Every time I've done a workout, I'll show you how it looks in here. Um, because every time I've done a workout, here's what it shows. So this was yesterday, Saturday morning, training load medium, aerobic training effect maintaining. And then it, it's always given me these super high, I mean, I feel like I'm, if you look at the heart rate graph, I'm just like in a peak red zone for a long period of time. And it's saying anaerobic is maxed out. Constantly getting super high scores on anaerobic versus aerobic, even though my heart rate is just at a high level for a long period of time. That doesn't quite make sense to me. And then four days, every time I get done with the workout, it's saying four days until you recover. So we're gonna have to watch that over time. That is a long recovery time and I'm not killing it too bad at the one hour workout. So we'll have to track that. Let's look at the app. Okay, so this is Sunto. One of the things that I'm just noticing out of the gate. So like if we go to the 19th, this was a thousand meter bikes. It's like two 20 minute AMRAPs, 1,000 meter bikes, and then some tricep extensions, odd object carry, and 20 burpees. And then a brief break, and then another 20 minute AMRAP. But you can see, look at the training effect. It says 5.5 anaerobic. I mean, my heart rate was peaked out for the majority of the time. I don't think that that specifies an anaerobic max out. I mean, look, if you look at the score, if you go into the question mark, it says basically it, you know, 5.0 to 5.9, it's you're overdoing it in that area. And this was 
biking, burpees, tricep extension, and odd object carries times two as well as a little bit of a change up on the second set, but two 20 minute sessions. I do feel like that load score in the middle right, 228, is pretty spot on for a high level exertion. And the watch obviously told me I have four days of rest I need from this workout. So things like that, you know, in the workout on Friday, it was, you know, air assault bike and 21, 18, 15, all the way down to three kettlebell swings. And then it was a rowing interval. So, you know, there was some interval work on the back half, but again, it's saying low aerobic training effect, high anaerobic, but this was, you know, 30 calories and 30 seconds off, 30 calories, 30 seconds off, a two minute break, and then 25 calories all in the rower. So again, I don't think that that is accurate, although I do think the training load score in the middle, right, 114 is accurate. And then what you see on the workout overview itself, you know, you can see the training load building over time. I do like that middle graph. And if you look at how the graphs are coming out, you know, it is, if you turn these off, it is tracking my base fitness over time because the watch is just getting to know me, but I do think that is accurate. This is something that they did poorly before. Uh, my fatigue level is high. And then if you look at the seven day load, it's saying I'm overdoing it, which, you know, I mean, I guess looking at the last three days, or it was a lot more work than I normally do. So more to see here, but I do like this final production that they're doing with the training load graph itself. And I'm interested to see how the base fitness grows over time and how it tracks my fatigue. And I'm definitely big, giving a big question mark to the uh, recovery. Okay, so time. looking at Soonto, I'm really starting to like what I see. The thing that you have to have is a lot more accumulation time. So we'll see in all the stats, it just needs a lot more time to build its analytical review of things, but we can see some immediate exertion scores, recovery times, and um, we can see how it's gonna sort of trend over the next few weeks. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons with Sunto. Okay, with Sunto, one of the things that Sunto doesn't do well is it doesn't show much information well on the actual training time. So you got heart rate information, recovering. This is actually your resources, your heart rate variability over time, body battery, but not related to your exercise levels and training load, steps and calories, training time. So I did 20 minutes today, just like I said, a 20 minute run. And then over the course of the week, I did a certain amount, no sleep track today. There's no information there. And then it's just my VO2 max score. So what you don't see is you don't see any training load details or recovery time itself elapsing here anywhere in the watch. So let's look at the app, but that's a bummer that it is missing. Okay. So this is Sunto. You know, if you see like the history, if we go to that same workout on um, Thursday, three days ago, um, it has changed the recovery time because on the watch it said, you know, a whole different thing. This was two 20 minute, you know, AMRAPs and it, the recovery time at 36 hours is actually about perfect. It did give me a PTE, which is the training effects version for Sunto of 5.0 in the middle left. And if you click on that, you can see that five is just like you're really crushing yourself. Um, it did give a relatively low training stress score um, or not as high. The Epoch does look right with what I'm seeing from Garmin, although it was rated higher in the Garmin app. But see, if you look at the next workout up, so this was a tough workout as well, which is that, you know, the air assault bike and kettlebell swings and then rowing intervals on the back half. It gave me recovery time of 14 hours. Now that didn't feel like enough, especially because if you look at the PTE, the training effect of 3.7, and then it gave me a low epoch 64. So again, 3.7 says you're doing, you're improving your fitness, like you're growing your fitness, but it only gave me recovery time of 14 hours. So we'll have more to see there. Um, and then it, this is the training load tracking. So the thing I do not like about their training load tracking is it doesn't all exactly make sense yet in my brain. You can click on any of these words and this is what I do all the time. I read the words and I say, okay, what is this telling me? What does this mean? You know, um, and so it says productive training. So it highlights the area of growth. I really do like the scores. I mean, the form on the bottom is like your fatigue level or something like that. And so, you know, it's saying that I've been working hard recently, which is true. I do think on the top, the fitness level is growing. So I'm curious to see how it's gauging my fitness. And then um, the TSS, which is the black and the fatigue, which is the 35. 
all that stuff's got to sink into my brain. But I do like the stats. I feel like they are high quality in some levels, just a matter of they need to say it better in a different way. So that's. And now with Polar. One thing you have to know about Polar watches that I just learned for the first time twice this week is that you actually are at risk. If you are using a chest strap and the watch is over off to the side, they have a little bit of a glitch. If it loses connection to the chest strap, the watch automatically assumes that you've died. And what that means is it not only stops the workout, but it deletes the entire progress so far. So it basically says, oh, he's goner. He's out. So I'm not getting a heart rate reading from the chest strap. So I'm going to cut this workout off and I'm not going to even save the first part of the workout. So two strenuous workouts. I didn't realize the watch had cut off. And so I missed that. I can add it back, but it doesn't add training load. So the scores here are not unfortunately as useful, but you can see sort of how they build. I've liked Coros's display of training load over time. And unfortunately, you better have that watch on your wrist, even if you're using a chest strap, because if it loses connection, it might drop the whole workout entirely. So let's take a look. Okay, with Polar, so last training session, five hours, obviously it's missing a lot. So this is their training load. I do like the way it looks, the way it's laid out. So your strain score, average score over the last seven days versus your average exertion over the last uh, 28 days. And so you'd get, you know, training less than usual because it didn't track those workouts. But you see a simple summary. But the other thing that you don't get in the Polar app um, is any recovery time from the workout. It does not track recovery time at all either in the app or in the watch, as well as it doesn't, um, you know, give you anything other than just this piece of information where you go in, you can see your score, and you don't get anything else. Just a sort of a noted a notice of how you're doing in your training load. Let's look at the app. So Polar has me as D training, cardio load status. And if I go into it, you know, this is where the cardio load will show, but let's just go into the weekly log. You know, it's such a bummer because you don't see these little red dots. See how these last two workouts have red dots underneath them, but the two earlier in the week don't. Um, that's a bummer because that is not accurate because I the watch stopped tracking and that's just frustrating. But Okay, so here's the tracking that was accurate where I did the 21, 18, 15 down to three. Um, well, each round, 10 calorie assault bike, air assault bike and kettlebell swings and then the rowing intervals. So it gave me a medium score. So again, I feel like that was a little bit harder than it, it, it should have reflected a little bit different number than a medium. Um, and then Saturdays, you know, so Thursday I manually entered, it didn't get captured. Saturdays. I didn't even put it in because none of this goes. So I lost Saturday's workout. So again, it's it's it seems like it's tracking a relatively low. You don't get any recovery time with Polar, so that's a bummer. And the the load score, this Trimp score, and under the where it says training load pro of 89, I feel like that's a little bit low for the workout and for how spent I was at the end of it. But um, and then you go into their training. You know, it, it really lays out the information. So you basically, if you're in, you see the cardio load, you just click on the word detraining, and it takes you to your stats for uh, your period of time, and it shows it really well. You can even, you know, go to a long term. The blue line is your fitness level. I like how it shows your growth of your fitness level, like a wave building. And each of the red lines are the exertion level for each workout. Um, so you can see when you had a really hard workout and then the purple line is just your seven day tracking. So um, it really does a great job with history and it really does a great job with the visualization. But we're going to have to watch the exertion scores to see if it feels like they're accurate for the difficulty of the workout. And then always be aware there is no recovery. And last but not least is Garmin. The save the best for last. This is the best all around so far. I'm going to show a couple things that which I don't love, but a lot of things that I do like and how they analyze things, how they give you information, how they lay out the information and how they track the information, the value of the information itself. Okay. So what do you get on the Garmin? So you get a lot in my opinion. So this is the training status. So I have only logged one run. So I need to log a second run for this to tell me if I'm growing my fitness or under growing my fitness. Um, that's what it'll tell me to run more. No status until I do so. There's my VO2 max score from today. That's pretty standard. But here's my load. You can see my load over time. It gives me the optimal range and my total load based on, and this is an exertion score, just like it is the cardio load with Polar and the Epoch or the, you know, 
the load scores are similar, but you can see with certain watches, you get load focus. Obviously, I'm doing a lot of highly aerobic things, but I love that you can see the recovery time. You can click into it sometimes, and it'll tell you it went up because you got higher because you got bad sleep. Um, but you can see everything, and this is a countdown timer. So it does do a countdown timer on Koros. There's nothing on the Sunto unless you're in the app and there's no countdown timer. Um, but this is really accurate. I feel like that's sort of spot on on the type of accumulation I built up. But let's look at the app and see how that Okay, looks. so this is the Garmin. Just know if you run twice a week, just five minutes, time, you know, tracking it with a run activity profile, five minutes, you will get a training status score, training status symbol up here, and it'll be part of your summary. So we have to actually dive into the training status because I didn't do a second run, I've only done one. But here's how it tracks the load over time, and we can go to all the exercise, that, like the workouts through the load tracking system. So load focus, you know, this is something specific to the 945, 745, and Phoenix 6, but the exercise load you can see over time. And if you look in the middle with each of these, you can see the load score. So like you look at the 19th, that was the two 20 minute, you know, bike, tricep, odd object, burpees, two 20 minute AMRAPs. And it gave me a load score of 370. That absolutely, I, I felt like I was, I couldn't do another thing at the end of it. So I feel like that is spot on. And I do like how it looks. So that's where you'd find the load score. You actually don't find it in the workout summary. And you can see that it gave me a gargantuan training effect of 4.9. And the anaerobic was a, a little bit high, but still it, it appropriately gave me aerobic training effect impact from that workout. Um, then if you go into the workout on Saturday, um, you see that it was an hour and nine minutes and training effect 3.9. You can see, you know, it was a 28 minute workout with a 30 minute time cap and it was just a lot of work. And so it's appropriately giving me high load scores as well as proper exertion scores. And then you can see it on the seven day. This is the one thing I don't like about Garmin system. You can obviously click on a part and you can see like where your score is, but it just doesn't look visually as helpful and you can't make it necessarily look any different. It does give you the green range where you're optimally growing or maintaining your fitness. And if I, you know, was properly running, you know, logging two runs a week or one run a week, actually, um, I would see a status here on whether I'm growing or not growing my fitness, but I just don't like the way it looks. But I do think that the workouts come through um, and this is just a brief run. The workouts come through with just just excellent overall summary, in my opinion, and great training effect. And then like we saw on the watch, very accurate, or I think accurate uh, recovery time. So what am I seeing in summary? Koros, way too much recovery time. Obviously there's a huge hurdle, way too many minutes of running required to be able to get any of the workout stats, the training load stats. but way too much, way too many minutes, and then way too much recovery time. All the workouts it's showing is anaerobic efforts or high, like high scores on the anaerobic side, not as high scores on the aerobic side. So I'm not sure what that means. I'm gonna to have to track it for a little bit more time, but overall, I do like the way the training load is coming out. With Sunto, just a lot of time building. I, I, I feel like they could make it more simple to understand. I mean, I had to read each of the specifics and the stats for each of the wording and what they mean a bunch of different times to be able to say, okay, uh, this means this. And the way that they show the numbers is almost like it looks counterintuitive to what you're supposed to be taking in. But the value of the information itself, obviously they're too low on the recovery time. That is not accurate. But their overall evaluation of the difficulty of the workout, especially relative to what they're saying, you know, like I'm getting like a training effect of like maxed out and a recovery time of 17 hours, that doesn't make sense. Um, but overall, I'm liking the training load tracking that uh, Training Peaks is providing. It looks really great. The information looks useful if you can somehow learn what the nomenclature is. Uh, with Polar, obviously, I just like the way that their layout looks, but they don't give any recovery time, zero recovery time. So that's a little bit of a bummer, and it's not as useful as some of the other watches because of that. But overall, I'm feeling like they're getting decent training load scores and the training load is starting to amass. I do love the way they display it, but I'm going to watch to see that the training load scores are probably on par with what they should be, like higher exertion numbers. And then Garmin has been doing everything. I don't like the lay I don't like the way that the 
basic chart for training load looks, but they have so many more stats and I love the way that the layout looks for the pieces of information off each and every workout, the exertion level. I love how it flows through to the watch. I love the, the way that it's, it's all laid out and I feel like the information feels the most accurate, the most useful for where I'm at in my fitness. I obviously have been wearing Garmin longer, so we're going to see where all these sort of bundle out. So with that, that is a midpoint sort of check-in of the training load, recovery time, workout exertion stats from Koros, Polar, Sunto, Garmin, Fit Gear Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.